2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. And I'm, I'm the first one to admit to you, I was deceived. We were all deceived at one point. Right. But now it's time to break those chains. It's time to change, that, to break that vicious cycle of thinking Christ is white. I'm approaching, let's get to the point, let's get that banger. Revelation chapter 1, come on. I'm going sure, to show the two parts that Christ is called, uh, is described as a black man. That's just one, I'm going to show the two parts. I'm going to get to the New Testament first, come on. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Now it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. You are both smart men, young men. What is the root word in revelation? Not revelation, right. more reveal. Right? If you're to reveal something, you have to what? Describe the, the thing, right? You want to describe. Like, let's say you, this, you, lost, you lost your soccer ball. You go to lost and found. I describe to me, reveal to me what soccer ball it is. I, it's white, it has gray, it's uh, spots to it, it has the World Cup thing on it. You gotta describe it. You know what I'm saying? So it's the description of Jesus the Christ. Go verse 10. Verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So, I know it might be, it's weird because you do you, not expect this day to stand by and listen to the, to the Bible. But guess what? You probably haven't heard the Bible this way before. You probably heard a Catholic, the Catholic, the Pope, teaching all softly, not even knowing your name. But we're out here on a hot day to try to teach and find you because not everybody doesn't accept the Bible. But it's a good thing you're here listening to it. But it says, so he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. This is John the Revelator talking. What did he see? Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. You know who that is? Who's the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last? That's Jesus Christ. You know? What thou seest, write in a book. That, that's the one to get. So Christ said out of his own mouth, look, what you're seeing right now, John, make sure you write it down. Because I'm pretty sure as you leave this day, somebody, once, once you go teach them, tell your mom, you know Christ is black? Your grandma, you know Christ is black? Most likely you're going to be hit. Tell, they're going to tell you, no, mijo, nobody's seeing Christ. But no, you have to go back and show him, no, Ma, I read it in the Bible. Christ said, look, John, what you see, write in a book. So he's literally seeing Christ. Yes, people have seen Christ, and they recorded in the Bible. Read on. Come on. And sent it unto the seven churches. Now, come on, verse, uh, verse 12. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So, what's your name again? I didn't catch your name. Lewis, right? I'm Lewis and... Love you, right? So, Lewis. Like you will do, if somebody right now across the street says, yo, yo, with a live voice, you're going to be like, yo, what's going on? He did the same exact thing. He turned, yo, like, well, who is this? He turned around like anybody will do. Read on. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. What are the seven golden golden candlesticks? Uh, oh, you said Hanukkah, right? Because I do you see the Hanukkah. Yeah. So-called Jewish people bring it out. But that's our, that's our symbol. You know I mean? That represents... The churches of the churches. So now he did not see the cross. Christ did not come with the cross. He came with the menorah, with the seven golden candlesticks. Read on. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. You know who the Son of Man is? It's Jesus the Christ. It's like me, Lewis, right? I see you, let's say six months from now. It's like, yo, that looks just like Lewis that I saw that day teaching at and, and, and uh Dykeman. Same thing because this is after Christ died. He's like, yo, I'm seeing somebody just like Christ right now. Read on. He's about to describe this man. Read on. Clothed with a garment down to his foot. So he described now his clothing. Remember, he's seeing Christ. Like us, you see our garments? He had one longer though. It was down to the foot. Read on. And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. So he had a you know we have regular linen. He had a bad garment. He had a, it was gold. You ever seen those uh, the wrestling, the WWE championship ring? He had the same thing, but obviously they were all designed. It was a golden girdle. Read on. 
His head. Now he describes his clothing. Now he describes his physical. It says his head. And his hairs. And his hair, like his beard and mustache, were what? Were white like wool. Now, let's break it down simple. It says they were white like wool. Now, Master, what animal do you get wool from? Do you guys know? Sheep. Good, good, good. Sheep. So now let's do a comparison and contrast, right? Now, this man right here that you said ignorant called Christ. Does he have more hair like this man? I'm talking about this man right here. Does he have more hair like a sheep or more like a horse? A horse. Now the Bible says his hairs were what? Like like what animal? Like sheep. Like sheep. Good, good, good. Now what people on this herb have hair more like like sheep? Good. Like him. So called but and that's just blacks, but you have also so called Afro Latinos that you call. We as you know I'm saying we have Latinos and blacks in America. We have that sheep hair. So now what now, I'm not saying that is Christ, but now out of these two images, which one looks more like the Bible describing? The one at the deep end or one here? So far, right? Okay, let's continue. Read on. As white as snow. So his hair was not black, brown. It was white. Read on. And his eyes were like a flame of fire. So now he says his eyes, the whites of his eyes were a flame like fire. Well, you know why? Because I don't want you to get you know, confused think he was some kind of like Jack, Dragon Ball Z evolution character that had like his eyes through blaze being out of his eyes. Why was his eyes red? Let's get that real quick. Because remember, what was Christ's first miracle? You remember? You're being taught like when you were little. Then the feast, he turned water into what? Wine. Wine. Read this. Watch this. Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. So Christ drank wine. You know, you ever see your parents drink any type of liquor? What happens to their eyes naturally? Get a little bit red. So that's what Christ did. He liked drinking wine, but in moderation. Not a drunkard, but in moderation. Now go back. Come on. Not verse 15. That's the key point. Verse 15. For Revelation chapter 1, verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if it burn in a furnace. Now it says his feet like unto fine brass. You seen? You ever seen brass before? What color is brass? Okay, a penny is made out of a type of a brass, right? What color is a penny? Brown. Brownish, right? So now it, it says it was like a. It was. It was. Read the part again. And his feet like unto fine brass. Uh, so his feet like to fine brass. Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. You get that penny, that brass. You burn it in an oven. What color do you get? You burn. Your mom burned rice. What happens to the rice? She leaves the bread too long. What happens to the bread in the, in the, in the toaster? What happens to the bread? It gets burnt, which burns what color? So Christ was described as a burnt man, which is what? Black. That's right. So your brothers, the so called African Americans, they're the image of Christ and they are our brothers. You understand? Because many times we, we, we you know, I'm a little bit lighter than you guys, but you guys are still, you guys are so called Latinos, but you're still a shade darker than me. And he's a so-called Latino, and he's a completely shade darker than you, all of us. So we're the same people. We first started the topic of this guy kill, right? Yeah. What's your answer? This guy kill? Yeah. Yes, you read before, remember about that I kill, I will make alive. So now, watch this. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. What is the promise that God is making? The same promise that before the earth can be struck by water, this time it will be fired. Don't, many times you might, you might find family members, you probably heard before that, oh no, it's a vida esta vieja, no, it's it, it, old. You might, you might hear that, and as a young man, you're going to want to join to the to your elders, like your aunts, your uncles, your grandmother, grandfather. They might say, no, niño, it's a vida vieja, it's no pasar. God said, look, it, I'm not, he's not slight concerned that it's going to happen one day. It's just a matter of what, I'm going to show you, it's, we are, no, no one knows what's going to happen. We all? As some men count slackness, huh? but it's long suffering to us who are not willing that any shall perish, mm -hmm. but that all shall come to repentance. See that he wants you, Louis, you, Levy, right? Yeah. To come into repentance. And you know what repentance is? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a little bit. It means change your ways. Like when you decide after today, wow, our plans was to go to the park and play soccer, but let me not because I can go tomorrow. Right, you about going you about going break soon, right? Summer break? Is school over yet for you? No. Oh, it's soon, right? So soon you're going summer break, you'll be like, damn, I'm gonna I'm gonna have almost every day to go play soccer. You know, let me not go today because the Bible says it's a Sabbath. You know what? Let me just go home because if I stay out too long, I might get hungry, I might get thirsty, and might most likely might go to the store and buy something. So let me not let me let me let me go just home. That's a that, that's a sign of repentance of you changing your ways as a young man. Cause I'm not sure there's no age to repent. There's no age. 
you read the Bible, Daniel was a young man, Timothy was a young man, you hear about David? King David, King David was a young man when he fought the lion. So there's many examples of young men changing in the Bible, as well as older men changing in the Bible. So don't say, well, I'm too young for this Bible thing. No, there's no age limit to it. Come on. Right. But verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So the day of judgment is going to come in a, as a thief in the night. Like, oh, he says a lot. You never receive a letter at your house. No email, no phone call. Hey, yo, Louis, prepare. Y'all coming tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Yo, make sure your stuff is right. You're not getting no warning. And they come unexpectedly. So that's you have to be prepared all the time. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Now, I said the heavens, the sky is going to pass away with a great noise. Now, you're about... Uh, thermonuclear fire bombs, like nuclear bombs. Yeah. You hear the news sometimes about Russia, what they're doing with Russia, with the new bomb Satan too. Now these bombs, you hear about Hiroshima and Nagasaki in history class, yeah. when the US dropped those bombs. Now that, that compared to bombs today, is nothing compared to what we have. You know what I mean? This time we have bombs that are like even 10 times stronger than that. And this that earth is going to pass with a great noise. That's your bomb dropping. Boom! Read on. And the elements. And the what? And the elements. You might think lava. We we talked about lava a couple minutes ago. It's a crazy. It's a. I don't even understand lava. But this this fire too, thermonuclear bombs, is gonna burn every element you see today. Like if you like um, Chernobyl. Right? It's called Chernobyl in, in, in Germany. Chernobyl. In Russia. Yeah. That was a nuclear plant base where the or it leaked. It was a couple, how many years ago was that? About uh, well over like eight. It was in the eighties, right? So it was a, a good time ago. Even to this day, you can't even go there without having your, your, your being covered. Now, this bomb today that will burn everything, your schools, your houses, it's going to completely melt away. Read on. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Uh -huh, on. The earth also. The earth of the end of the world. It says the earth also. Read on. And the works that are therein shall be burned up. Everything. Everything. You see your, great, your, your Empire State Buildings, your airports, everything to be completely destroyed in this day. This is a real about the end of the world, that it's gonna come. Remember it says, um, don't count as slackness as some men do. You have to keep this in mind, it's gonna happen one day. As it is, and you as an Issacharite, you want you to thank God that you have the chance to repent because repentance change is not open to everybody. It's only open to the so-called blacks and Latinos and Native Americans. So read on. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. See that? It says knowing that it shall be dissolved. Meaning it's going to happen one day. Read on. What manner of person are ye to be? Now Lewis and Levy, that's a, this is the, 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 the Bible has a question for you. Don't bear in mind. So the Bible has a question for you. What type of person are you to be now? Are you a type of person to now break the Sabbath willingly? Are you, are you that type of person to do that now? Knowing that this day is going to happen. And it can happen right after you buy that water on the Sabbath. And boom, the bombs drop. Now you're going to be there looking dumbfounded. Uh, sorry, Christ, I was thirsty. Is your thirst, is your hunger going to happen? Is that more important than your salvation? That's right. Because you, have, you right. must be, you have to be tired of watching Russian news and seeing your people, especially Mexicans, being called wetbacks, right. spicks, right. treating you like garbage. You have, you have to be tired. Even as young men, you have to go like, damn, wow, like, I, I, I'm just an immigrant now. Like, well, yo, no, you're God chosen people. That's and my right. sister, you are God chosen right. people too. That's right. The so-called yeah. blacks and Latinos and Native Americans, we're God chosen. Right. Nobody else besides us has the power to repent. We have the, the chance to repent. Now, as young men, this is what God called you today. Because don't look at it as an accident that, wow, like this this kid just called me. I was going to the park, now I've been here for almost an hour hearing the Bible. I have everything in the Bible. I thought, I thought these dudes were crazy. But it's all a spiritual thing. And this is God talking to you right here. Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Now, do you want to raise up for God, be on God's team? He said, who will raise up for me against the evildoers? Read on. Right. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Now, right. do you want to stand up and be on God's side? You heard about the Avengers before? Yeah. You want to be on God's Avengers team? Yeah. That's who you want to be at. But now, what is the first step to be on that team? How are you going to do that? Repent. I'm going to show you. Right, give me first Acts 3.19. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Now 
about Lewis and Levi, we have to repent and be converted. What does that mean? To, what does it mean to be converted? What does that mean? To change. Now, what changes us? Is it the Catholic Church? What changes us? Okay, but what what what, what changes us? Uh, like what, what what okay? He said us. You have to probably change ourselves. But what what do you have to like? What will have the chance to change? Or what makes you change? God, God right? Watch this. The Book of Psalms, chapter nineteen, verse seven. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. So what makes us what was perfect and converts us? Read it again. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You see that? What makes us perfect again? And what converts us? The law. The law is like, when you start changing now, for example, on just the Sabbath, when you stop cooking on the Sabbath, stop working on the Sabbath, stop buying and selling on the Sabbath, you're making steps to becoming more perfect. Right. You're making steps to change the way you live, and that makes you more on what? On God's side. When God sees that, you come into what? Standing up for Him. When people ask you, well, yo, bro, why you want to play soccer today? To move to having a five on five. Nah, bro, I'm keeping the Lord's Sabbath. Now, there's more laws. How to change and how to repent. I'm going to show you now. Um, you guys eat chorizo? Ch chicharron? Bacon? You like, guys love that? Uh, you, like, you like I know you, you like it, right? So you like, you, I say you gotta lick your tongue. You're like, oh man, I'm kind of that. You like it? I'm going to show you. Can you eat that according to the Bible? You don't know? What do you think? It's why? Because God made, God made the pig? Watch this, give me Leviticus 11, start verse 7. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof and be cloven for it, yet he shoot it not the cut. He is unclean to you. He is what? Unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Wait, wait. So we cannot eat what? We cannot eat pork. And there's nothing hard because you might, you know, you might like bacon. Well, on the grocery store, what's probably on the left side of that? Turkey. You probably have turkey bacon. You might like ham sandwiches. On the right side, you have what? Turkey breast, chicken breast. Beef. There's beef bacon too? You have beef bacon. You understand? There's ways to, there's ways to what, keep God's commands without what? Going crazy. You know what I mean? So you cannot eat pork. And say, now, what else can I eat? Continue reading. Come on. And their carcasses he shall not touch. You see that? So even for example, let's say now you're at home. Because example, we as young men, you'll be at home and your mom might say, Okay, um, I made um you know beans, rihollas? Yeah. They might put something that doesn't so they like putting pork inside the beans to make it taste better, right? Yeah. Your mom does that? Yeah. Now, let's say your mom does make beans and she puts pork in the beans. And you might be like, well, okay, I'm uh, I might eat pork. I'm gonna just kind of scoop out the bacon and just uh, your, your wallet, 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 your wallet, your wallet. So you might say, okay, I'm gonna scoop out the bacon, the pork. I'm gonna just eat just the beans. Can you do that? He yeah. said, yeah. Watch it. Read it again. Of their what? Their carcasses. And their carcasses, ye shall not touch. No. Meaning automatically that whole pot of beans, you cannot even touch it. That's how nasty the pork is. So guess what? When you, now that's the term. God said, "Who who shall stand up for me?" Right? Now you as young men, a way you can't stand, you a way you can stand up for God is at home. When mom makes that, let's say makes that pot of beans with the pork. No, nah, mom, I'm not eating that. Why? I work so. She, she might try to get your emotions. I work so hard. I went all day to the grocery store. I cooked all day for you. You gotta tell me this. Like, mom, look, I'm sorry, but the Bible says we cannot eat pork. And that's how you show God that you're standing up for Him. You know what I mean? And that's what happened to you as young men. You cannot eat pork. Watch this, read on. These shall ye eat of all the, the all that are in the water. You guys eat seafood? Yeah. What kind of seafood do you guys like? I salmon. Salmon? I like salmon. What else do you eat? Beef shrimp? Sometimes calamari? Lobster? Big lobster? Like you guys go for lobster and all that stuff? Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you that. You said, lo you said salmon, lobster, shrimp. Now, only one out of those three can you eat. Can you guess which ones you can out of those three? Salmon. Salmon. Those other two you mentioned, you cannot eat at all. I'm going to show you. Watch this. These ye shall eat of all in the, that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So those that you can eat that have fins and scales, like salmon have fins and scales, tilapia has fins and scales, you have white fins that have fins and scales, uh, snapper like parigo has fins and scales. Um, but now, does shrimp have fins and scales? 
Does lobster have fins and scales? Calamari have fins and scales? No. So now, why can you not eat them? Because God just doesn't like them? Why not? Because they, they don't have fins and scales. They don't have fins and scales. Think about it. You, you see your mom make shrimp before at home? Yeah. What, what is the first thing you do when you, make, when you cook shrimp? Take out. You have to open up and do what? Take it out. Clean the poop out of it. You ever, you ever seen a shrimp before? What is the difference between a shrimp and a cockroach? They look exactly the same. Except one was more, you know, sea-like. The same animals. A lobster and like a spider. They look, like the, they look the same exact thing. You know what I mean? You're basically eating insects of the ocean because the, the shrimp, the calamari, the oysters, they clean the ocean. So the same way a pig eats his own poop, right. the same way the shrimp eats other animals' poop and you're eating the same diseases. Now watch this. Continue reading. I'm going to show you. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas. Like the shrimp, the lobster, they don't have fins and scales. We don't. And in the rivers, and all of all that move in the waters, mm -hmm. and any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Yeah, they should be a detest, a grow, a nasty thing unto you. So your mom ma now makes uh, paella, right? It's called paella. Paella. Your mom makes that? Now, that has the oysters, the shrimp, a little bit of lobster meat in it, right? Crab meat. Yeah. What do you want to say, your mom? Or your aunt that made it? Huh? You can't eat it. I'm sorry, mom. You might have some pizza. I'll eat some pizza. Cool. Make sure I have no pepperoni on it, though. No, no, no sauces on it. You know what I mean? Now, give me some rock five and seven. Because now these are big. Yeah, are these hard things to do? No, these are things to make you healthier. Because there's more also to how uh, to eat. I'm, I'm gonna get to that after, but I'll get this one first. So rock five and seven. Come on. So rock five and seven. The, the book of Sirach. Chapter 5, verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn off the, to the Lord. What does it make to make tarry? To make excuses. It says, don't make no excuses to turn to the Lord. Like what you're they're saying about, um, for example, you only live once. Or you're young. Live it up. Don't make excuses. Don't take your time to change your ways. Don't be like, Christ is going to go. Read on. And put not off. From day to day. Don't be like, okay, I, I heard that you cannot do stuff on it. You cannot buy some stuff. I heard that. But man, I'm already out here today. I'm I, Next week, I'm going to keep it. Then next week, you can turn it to what? Next week. Next month to next month. Next year to next year. You know what? Okay, they told me I cannot eat pork, shrimp. I, you know what? My mom did cook today. I probably promised her I'm going to eat dinner at home. I'm going to keep it tomorrow. Then tomorrow turns again to tomorrow. Next thing you know, you're already two weeks still eating the pork, shrimp, lobster. Read on. Read on again. Day to day? And put not off from day to day. Uh-huh. For suddenly. Meaning suddenly, bro. You might you might play that soccer game that one day. Or you least expect it, read on. Shall the wrath of the Lord come forth? Meaning what? He had enough with you. You might tear your ankle. You might tear your ACL. You know what I mean? You might trip on a rock and crack your head open. Now in the hospital. Stitches on back your back of your head. On a whole field. <laughs> I had the whole field. You should have that one rock on the whole field. Boom, you crack your head. You break your nose. Man, what's going on? That's judgment from God. That's that you might eat that that shrimp, that lobster that has some that had worms in it. Food night in the hospital again, yo, you're getting pumped out in the stomach. Why? Because you ate that that that, that nasty ass pork that had that probably had uh, worms in it. You understand? Read on. And in thy security. When you feel safe, you know, I'm good. They told me that God gets angry at me, but you know what? It's been almost three months that I'm still breaking the Sabbath. I'm still eating shrimp, pork, lobster. I'm good, man. See, the Bible is fake. I told him, bro, they're bugging. I'm telling you, bro, they're bugging. I'm, I'm good. And your security, your safety. Thou shalt be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed with judgment. You understand? That's it. And perish in the day of vengeance. See that now when we read the vengeance, when the earth shall be destroyed with fire, you're going to be on God's opposite side instead of on his side. I didn't believe you've been listening? You are uh, you you with us? You've been to uh, yeah. You listen online? Yeah, I'm not. Okay, come closer. What's your name? Lester. 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 Okay, cool. So you know it's like from a tribe? Benjamin. Benjamin, okay. Paul, right? St. Paul uh, St. Charles Paul. Now you listen to yourself uh, by yourself. What camps do you watch? Just you guys. Just us? Uh -huh. Good. Now you do know that it's I your brother take care, have a good day, alright? You know it's a hard thing to be by yourself, right? It's actually against God laws to be by yourself, right? Give me that. Give me our uh, first Hebrews 10, 20, 25. You must join a camp. You know what I mean, we're not telling you you have to by force come to us, but you have to be with somebody. The uh He 
Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. It says not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Because what's the commandment on the Sabbath to do? Here in the Bible. Congregate. Congregate. Right now, who have you been congregating on the Sabbath since you've been learning? A friend in the house. You watch the video. Okay. Now, they're not really congregating as a whole. Now, now there's also, also high holy day. Like tomorrow is the day of what? Pentecost. Now, a day of Pentecost is, is a commandment. Give me that real quick. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Um, it's a commandment out of all the other high holidays. Like you have Han Hanukkah, uh, Feast of uh, Bowling the Trumpets, right? Um, Pentecost is one of the three high holidays that you must come and, and, and gather. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all males appear before the Lord thy God. See, so three times a year shall all males appear before the Lord thy God. Meaning, these three days, you have to come and congregate. You have to. The other ones, you really, you'll say, you still have to congregate, but these three are held in a higher a, a higher state and a higher level. You have to congregate. Which ones? Read on. In the place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. What's that? The Passover, right? You, you held the Passover this year? By who? By yourself? Or? With my friend. With your friend, which is you and him? Yeah, and mom. Okay, but you have to keep the feast of, of, of Passover, the Oliver Bread, as a, as a body, as a congregation. Read on. And in the Feast of Weeks. What's the Feast of Weeks? Pentecost. You need the 50th day, which is tomorrow. T tonight at evening, at night, at sundown, starts the Feast of Pentecost until tomorrow sundown. So that's another high holy that you have to come together as a body to congregate. Read on. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. You kept Tabernacles last year? No. No. And why not? You didn't know how to keep it? or? I got like six months with you. Okay, so, so you see that? When you're by yourself, you when you're months, even six, even three months with us, we'll teach you, Bryce, over when Tabernacle comes. If you can't come to the park, make sure you buy a little tent, set it up around your house, keep it, you know, let it be in a booth, in a tent. So these are things when you're in a, in, amongst the body, you learn. When you're, when you're by yourself, it's that much harder to keep God's commandment because you don't know where to go and seek help. You know what I mean? So it says, in a feast of, of, of Passover, the bread, feast of weeks, and tabernacles. So go back to Hebrews. So you understand? Like tomorrow, if you have to carry tomorrow, somehow or somewhere you have to carry this with a body. You know what I mean? You know? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Because some people say, like, I'm a digital state of mind. But some people we encounter say, well, I don't have to congregate. You know what I mean? The Bible says where two or three are, are there I am. It's just use that scripture, but there's many things that said that. I'm going to show you after this why it's more important than just to observe the high holy days, the festival days. I'm going to show you why it's important to be amongst a body. You understand? So that some do. You're a part of it. Don't be in that category that you feel comfortable just being with you and your friend. You have to join a camp. You have to congregate. Read on. But exhorting one another, and so much the more, and ye see the day approaching. That's what we're doing right now. We're trying to exhort you because certain times, you know, we fall. You know, we fall. Should say just now, fall seven times and raised up. Now, when you fall, who do you go to? Or you, or you, or you don't fall. You think you're good? No, uh, I, I know I fall. So where do you go to for that? Give me James. You know, you said you ask yourself, well, when you fall, you know where to go. And that's the whole purpose of having a body with us because if I fall, I can call this brother right here. Let's say he's not, let's say he's busy. I can call him right here. Or if I'm just feeling weak, I can actually go to one of their houses. Yo, like, yo, I'm feeling weak, bro, can I go? But when you're by yourself, it's that much harder because you just feel you're by yourself. Watch this, you got that now? Yes, sir. James, chapter five, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Now how can you how can you confess your faults? How can you ask help from one for another if you're by yourself? You understand? It's impossible. That's why the commandment of God is to have a body with you. So when you do feel weak, you, you can call this brother, call that brother. You have multiple numbers to contact. When you're by yourself, it, you, you know, it's basically you're setting your own damnation. That's what the Bible says, uh, this fault, the just man falls seven times, but raise up. If you're by yourself and you fall and nobody to raise you up, you're going to stay down. You, the Bible says uh, uh, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, that's why it's important to congregate with somebody. But give me Jay, uh, 1 John 4. And I said something before about you don't have to come with us. But you have to pick 
somebody, but now how do you know where to go? How? John. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Said, Beloved, believe not every spirit. God let you know, right? Don't believe everybody that's just out here teaching the Bible because you have many other camps that preach the Israelites, but they actually don't, they're not, they're not, they're not right in their state of mind. You run into something that might tell you, bro, it's right to rape. Bro, what, yo, what? You know what I mean? You, so you can't just join anybody. You have some that teach the women only to wear pants, uh, skirts on the Sabbath, the other day they're wearing pants. Like, bro, the Bible says my, a woman cannot wear that because it's a man. Some only wear, like right now, you wear fringes. I identify you as an Israelite. I shalom you. Some say, no, brother, just wear your fringes on your Sabbath garment. Nah, bro, this is throughout your generations. So read the part again. Beloved, believe it not every spirit, but try the spirits. You have to what? But try the spirits, whether they are of God, mm -hmm. because many false prophets are going out into the world. So basically, what you have to observe and know that they're keeping God's commandments. I mean, we in the journey of Christ, we, we uphold God's commandments. That's our foundation. That's right. We teach God's commandments. Right, right. Other kids you might watch, they might sound good, they might know the prophecies, but when you really examine them, they're not really, they're not really teaching God's commandments and keeping them. So that's what we're telling you, bro. You have to, you have to observe and prove, and prove the camp you're going to go to, and you have to congregate. Sirach chapter 6, verse 6. This is why I said before, it's important that you have to be amongst the body. Let me read a couple examples about the feast days, how to keep them, and also about having counsel, having help. When you're by yourself, you have nobody to help you, and that's what the Bible says this. It says, be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. You see that? So every day you know that you can be a body of people. But have that body of people have one counselor. Meaning you have to have people to go to to help you out through your weaknesses. I said before, going by yourself is that much harder to, to keep God's commands because when you fall down, who you go to is your counselor. You know? Your friend the friend that's with you, he probably had the same time in you the truth, right? Like he's been watching you this by the same time. Like how much longer? By months? Maybe like, you got like two years in total. Okay, but I, why, why is he not crying here? I don't know. You see that? I so, that. so he should have been that example for you. If he's been teaching that long, why is he not in a congregation? Because being by himself, he has no really experience like that. You know what I mean? We want the thing about it. One thing, one thing people, we want people, I mean, there's three trials of faith. There's the, your personal trials, your marital trials, and the congregational trials. When you're by yourself, you're not going to be able to go through congregational trials. You're not going to know how to dialect with your brothers. You know, the Bible says Matthew 18, when a brother offends you, you must know how to deal with him properly. If you're by yourself, how can you have that experience to, to fulfill that, that scripture? How, you cannot really uh, experience your congregational trials by yourself. Other people are sometimes scared of congregating because now when you're, amongst, when you're amongst a body of people, of course you're going to get into certain uh, situations with brothers and the truth. Now are you going to uh, hate that brother? Are you going to curse him out? Or are you going to apply the scriptures and try to, you know, work things out with him? That's so when you're a body, you gain experience. You understand? Okay, so you're before the teaching about uh, eating, right? Now, we don't die too long, right? You know there's more to eating than just the, the food you cannot eat and can't eat? You know that? Like there's moderation that they should be eating in moderation? Yeah, the Sirach, is that Sirach 31? Is that it? Is that it? Because there's certain things in the Bible that, like I said to you before, you know, but there's more in depth to it. But now, like this right here, this right here, we we, we had classes on this before. The bitch had a class on it. So when you're most about you, we'll, we'll correct you on that. Remember, you can't, people, we don't want a body of people, there's multiple eyes to correct. Because some, for example, he might be with you, and you might be doing something he might not see. But if I come that long, I'm like, bro, you didn't correct him on that, bro? You see how you see how he's talking to people? You're correcting. Bro, is it? We want other people, there's more eyes to correct you. Like if I'm just with me and him, he might be used to me, so he might correct me on certain things, but I'd say he might come along. Like, bro, yo, he's off, why don't you correct him? Oh man, I didn't even see that, my fault, bro. If you're amongst the body, there's more eyes for correction. You know what I mean? There's more room for perfection because it'd be corrected. Um, got that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sirach, chapter 31, verse 19. Sorry, 16. Verse 16. Eat as it becometh a man. So I said to you, there's more law, there's more into just what not to eat and what you can eat. I'm pretty sure you know the dietary law. It is also in the dietary law. Read this. Eat as it becometh a man. Huh? Those things which are set before thee, devour not. See that? It says devour not. Many times, you know, you go to the, to the table, 
yo, yo, you, yo, you eat that plate in seconds. You just like, yo. Bible says, eat as a man. You know, don't devour that plate of food. You know, take your time, make sure they get to, to school. Get that like 25. I'm not saying you got 25 chews per, per, per bite. Don't do that. Like, but you know, take your time with it. Don't be out there you know, just devouring like, 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 like a vacuum. You're, you're, you're vacuuming before you're sniffing it. It says, devour not. Read on. I'm devouring not. Lest thou be hated. You see that? Lest you be hated. But amongst the body, you ain't gonna experience that because you're not the body on feast days, like Pentecost, the Passover. If you're amongst the body and you're eating like a damn vacuum, your brother, yo, chill out, man. Yeah. You're not gonna be able to experience that by yourself. Cause bring by yourself, like, it's my house. I, I, I can eat however I want in my house. But amongst the body, yeah, but yo, bro, like just slow down, man. The food not going nowhere, man. Just take your time. This is a part of dietary law. You know, yeah, you heard of etiquette before? Yeah. This is God's etiquette for us, read on. Leave off first for manners sake. Sorry. Leave off first for manners sake. See that? Leave off first. Don't be the first one to always grab food. As of before, by yourself, you can experience that. But now it's a feast day, right? And they're passing out the plate of foods. And you might know an example of a person that been with you longer in the truth. Don't try to let him eat first. Not because you're newer, you're hungry, let me get that, let me get that pizza. And then the other person that's been here for years, nah, yo, you know what I'm saying? Just leave all first for manner's sake. Don't be the first to always try to grab the food all the time. But you know, you know, you have a family, family dinner, they bring out the, the garlic, the garlic bread or the, and you're just like, you know, first one to grab, that's just what we have a grand full of bread, like, yo, let me grab the whole thing real quick, put it on my plate. Don't do that, you know? And be not unsatiable, mm -hmm. lest thou offend. Mm -hmm. When thou sittest among many. When it says among what? When thou sittest among many. That's where your congregation is. When you sit amongst many, read on. Reach not thy hands out first of all. You see that same thing as before. Don't be the first one to always reach out. You know what I mean? Let's say my, you're wrong amongst the brothers. They order pizza. Don't be the first one to go grab not just one slice, but you grab two. Next thing you know, damn, my, my, someone didn't have one slice. You know what I mean? Don't be the first one to reach out first. This is etiquette. This is God's etiquette. Read on. A very little. A what? A very little. And guess what? Myself included, I'm trying to change my way into this right here. Just a very little. It's sufficient for a man well nigh nature. Yeah, but today, in today's age, like I'm a lot. I'm trying to prove myself in this because we're raising us in a society. We have to, you have to eat three times a day, and not just little meals, but you have to have for breakfast the pancakes with the eggs and the toast. Then for lunch, you have the sandwich with the with a little dessert, and you have something else on top of it. And then they talk about dinner time. You have the steak, the potatoes, the vegetables, the and the bread. Only in America. You go, you go to our countries. You know, like, you're, like you're in Jamaica, some sort of Jamaica, they don't have food to really eat like that, you know what I mean? Like, a very little is good for them, you know what I mean? The Bible says what? A very little is sufficient for a man well nature. It goes into a gluttony, you know what I mean? It goes into gluttony, meaning we have to we have to change our bodies. That's what many times people where we suffer from, like, you know, obesity. And many times, you know, like, the Bible, this is a way to stop that problem, you know what I mean? Not saying that you cannot eat, but yo, he says eat in moderation. A little, a very little sufficient for a man will nurture. Read on. And he fetched not his wind short upon his bed. What do you think a lot of times you might have problems sleeping? Like, yo, man, I'm in trust pain, y'all. Can't sleep, man. Why not? You might say, oh, I don't know, man, I'm in stressful thing. Nah, bro, man, because you're eating too much. You know what I mean? You cannot eat a, a, a five course meal and then try to go sleep a half hour after that. Your body would not do that. You'll be in a bed, you think about a heart attack, man. You need to get some Pepto Bismol. Right? Some thumbs, you know, thumbs to, I need a thumb, man, to burp this thing out, man. I, I'm dying, y'all. I, I, I need some aqua cells to burp this thing out. You know what I mean? It says if you if you eat very little, you know, you, most I say you're not gonna be troubling on the bed. Read on. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. You see that? Many times you wanna know why you can't sleep properly because you're eating too much. It says sound sleep comes from moderate eating. You know, no, you know, if you're hungry, I'm not saying don't, 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 you know, eat a nice meal. But if you know you ate two hours ago. And they go to somebody's house to offer you food, and it's just damn man, looks good. I'm gonna have another. No, bro, you know, you know, I'm gonna take it to go. I, I will just a little bit. Moderate eating. It's a sleep comes with moderate eating. We don't. He rises early, and his wits are with him. See that you, you good. And I experienced that too. For like, one time, I had to like, I very little like fruits, and like, I experienced the Sabbath day. I don't eat that. We don't. I don't eat that much on Sabbath day. I wake up that day feeling good, but some days when I know I mess up and I eat like I eat a lot, I realize I'm a little bit more slug in the morning. You know what I mean? I feel a little bit more tired. So it says when you eat healthy, you will wake up early. You have no problem waking up early and you have your wits with you, mean you're alert. You're not like, yo, bro, like, I should feel extra tired today, man. Maybe because you ate, you try to go to sleep last night, 
right after here and having a full rack, you know, of like of steak with the with the, with the vegetables on the side, the potatoes, the and the fresh fries, all that stuff, you know. But the pain of watching and color and banks of the belly are with an, are with an insatiable man. Make sure you don't know why you have a lot of stomach problems. Like you know, you have diarrhea, you have constipation. You know, your, your stomach just hurts. Having gases. That's in, you know that was in the Bible. This is in the Bible. God actually had to write in us a book of how to eat right. You know what I mean? So these are things you have to learn. Read on. And if thou has been forced to eat. So many times you're little, you're forced to eat, right? So now, you might not watch this, this is blow your mind. This is in the Bible. If you're forced to eat, read on. Go forth. Vomit. <laughs> Go forth and what? Vomit. And thou shalt have rest. See that? So God, God even telling you, if you know you ate too much, you know you're not you're at that point, you just feel you have the, the itis. God says, yo, look, if you ate too much, you'll go throw that thing up, and you're going to beat you feel better. Read on. That's telling that? Yes, that's basically it. Right. Uh, so now, why have you not, has, has anything stopped you from congregating, or you just have, you chose not to congregate? Has that like work? Or it's nah, just, I don't work on Saturday. So it's just, it's just like you just haven't chose to congregate? Yeah. Kind of? So I we, feel like I got to get myself more right to go. What do you mean, more right in what? Like, I see your beard, I see your fringes. Yeah, I'm not really following everything there. Like what? Give me, some, give me some examples. I still smoke weed and smoke cigarettes. Okay, so it's on a constant basis or you are? Uh, yeah, on a constant basis. Why? Still not over that. I'm going to show you. Watch this. Give me, um, give me Corinthians 3. Matter of fact, yeah, are you on Titus already? Give me Titus 2 and 1. Book of, the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So the sound doctrine is the Bible. We, we have we have to do sound doctrine. You have to be able to teach the people as well the sound doctrine, which is keeping God's commandments. Read on. That the aged man. Now the aged man, because you know you yes you have little gray hairs. You are obviously more older than I am. You're probably around the same age, most of your brothers, maybe maybe a little bit older than them. So you as a more aged man than I am. You have more experience in this earth. You have to what? That the aged man be sober. Be what? Sober. Now smoking weed, you're not sober when you smoke weed. Like, never, I'll tell you, I just smoke weed. A lot of us used to smoke weed here before. So, we're here to be that living example. We're trying to tell you. And a lot of us even battle that. You know, walk, walking down the street and you smell that, the reefer, and that might just catch you. Yo, bro, like, yo, that might catch you, but I, I need it. But that's what, that's when you have the brother's number. That you are the one person that you know that went through it. Yo, bro, like, yo, how do you battle through that, man? Like, you, 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 I'll tell you, but look, like, I'll tell you. When I go through that, you know, you might as well go straight home, bro. Don't even stop. Even if it means counseling what your plans were, yo, go straight home after that. Because if you stay too long outside, it might you not go into that, to the, to the plug, getting that. Now you go, now you catch yourself going to the grocery store, and it's up the Dutch, the rap. And then you're going to the walk into the plug's house, you have the weed now, you have the dime bag, and then you're rolling it up, and then you're smoking it. Go straight home. Read that again. That the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. See that? You have to be all these things. The first thing tells you you have to be sober. Hey, what's your name again? I'm Lester. Lester, right? Lester. You have to be sober. Now you're in Corinthians 3.16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Yes, know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Now, these are scriptures that you probably always heard. You've heard these before, right? Uh, and I'm just, I'm, I'm bringing this brief for, to, for a point. Now you've heard it before. It says, know ye not that you are the temple of God? You are the temple of God. You know? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Uh -huh. if any man defileth the temple of God. Both cigarettes and weed, you're destroying that temple. You know? Him shall God destroy. See that? That's you your cancers. You have your sicknesses. You know what I mean? All these different plagues. God will send to you for what? Especially now that you're willing doing it, it's even worse. Now, you said that each is not right. Guess what? We're all here, we're working for perfection. None of us here are gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you that, yo, I got it down packed, I'm perfect. No, bro. Uh, Philippians 3 and 12. Not, not 2 and 12, 3 and 12. Paul says something about us. Because you said you're kind of, yes, I understand you're trying to get right, but I'm gonna tell you, there's some things that you're just not gonna overcome until Christ returns. And it's different, that's just called a battle. I Meaning you're fighting your flesh. If you're giving into it, you're not fighting no more. 
So if you at least you continue fighting, guess what? We're gonna help you out. But if you're willingly given, you're given into it, then bro, we're gonna tell bro, come back until you are right. But how can you do that without help? By yourself is harder. That's why we are monsters. We're gonna build you. We're gonna help you fight that. Philippians 3 and 12. The book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Not as though I had already attained. Um, give me verse, oh yeah, it's verse 12. Not as though I had already obtained. Now this is Paul talking, bro. He says, not as though as I already obtained. What is he, what is he referring to? The kingdom. Paul is saying, look, I have not reached the kingdom yet. Like us right here, none of us have made it into the kingdom yet. We're susceptible, we're, that's the word. We're easy, susceptible, right, to sin as easily as you. Any of us here can fall into one day and say, yo, bro, I fell into smoking weed, bro. Anyways, that happened to us. Can call, I can call him one day, baby, bro. Yo, I don't know, man. I, I smoked the blackie yesterday, bro. I was just stressed out. I guess what? I'm gonna get corrected. You know, man, I'm gonna get corrected, but guess what? We have the, we battle the same thing. We're not above you in the fact of, of, of temptation. Well, anyone's gonna hear can say the same thing you're saying. But guess what? You're actually not fighting it, you're giving into it because you have no help with you. You know? Either we're already perfect. Like I told you, none of us here are completely perfect yet. You know, because you might say, well, I'm going to go to the town fully perfect yet. No, we're still going through it. I'm sure said, just man fallen seven times. But guess what? We're working to that. And I say it, read on. But I follow after. If that. But I follow after. I mean, I follow after the kingdom. I follow after to reach that perfection. Read on. If that I might apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Read on. Brethren. I come not myself to have apprehended, uh -huh. but this one thing I do. So, like I said, for Paul said, look, even Paul himself said, look, look, I have not, I have not, I'm not perfect yet. I have not apprehended all my trials. Meaning, he said, look, I'm not an easy walk for me either. Saying, it's not easy walk. Paul, you know, look, bro, it is not easy walk for me either. I'm, he's gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, he's gonna tell you, this walk is not easy for none of us. That's what's called what a battle. You know what I'm saying? That's what uh, in Surah 2 says, my son, if it comes to the Lord, prepare thyself for what? For temptation. But the difference between us and you is on this side, we have brothers to help us out and fight it. When you're by yourself, you're in an isolated island, and you're, easy, you're more easily to fall into that. Read on. Forgetting, forgetting those things which are behind, Read on. and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Huh? I press toward the mark. Meaning like Paul, we all present to what more? The kingdom. Every day we're fighting our flesh. We're fighting to get to that kingdom. Like smoking weed, you said. Smoking cigarettes. You have to fight every day and fight that to press towards the kingdom. Read on. I press toward the mark of the for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, before I leave that, come on for that last part. Read on. Let let us therefore, as many as be perfect. You see that? Let us therefore, as many be perfect. Read on. Be thus minded. Mm -hmm. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So I'm trying to tell you, it's the same way Paul battled. He said first, look, I have not completely, I'm not done with my trials yet, but I press towards that mark and I'm trying to be perfect as many examples read as perfect. Job was perfect. Christ was perfect. So we have to have these examples that we have to fight every day to be like them. Like Paul himself said, I'm fighting my flesh every day. But now, now with brothers, we have to help you out battle, you know, your sins. But you by yourself, bro, it's a different story. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.